Bugging out is a decision that is life or death. You have to be ready and you have to confidently and decisively make the decision to stay or go before you no longer have the choice and your survival is left to fate. We've discussed the decision-making process and the contents of your bug out bag to help you with this decision to stay or go with confidence. From becoming a refugee, to leaving your preps behind, to being a victim of the elements, there are many reasons not to bug out if you can safely stay in your location. Still, residents whose neighborhoods were wiped out by wildfires in Colorado or California will be the first to tell you that staying put in a disaster isn't always a certainty if you hope to live. Here are five must know things to understand the ramifications of bugging out and why your home is always your first and best option. Download the Start Preparing Survival Guide to help you prepare for any disaster. I'll post a link in the description and comments section below or visit cityprepping.com forward slash get started for a free guide to help you get started on your journey of preparedness. Number one, you leave the bulk of your preps behind. The most apparent reason why bugging out is a bad idea is because you have to leave your preps behind. You may have a 55 gallon barrel or two of water in your garage for an emergency, but that 55 gallon barrel will weigh at least 484 pounds or 220 kilograms. It's far too heavy to move quickly, load into a vehicle, or even roll down the street. Just a gallon of water weighs 8.34 pounds or 3.785 kilograms. Just carrying three gallons will make movement difficult for you. The other option is collecting water from the wild and treating it to be drinkable. You could use a silcock key to harvest water from commercial buildings or use a live straw or other personal filtration devices for drinking water from the wild. However, the problem is that when you are on the road and fleeing a disaster, the competition for water and other resources will be high. You may be targeted or robbed at worst. At best, you may be competing for water sources. The same is true for food. Fortunately, you can carry enough of the right foods to sustain you for a long time, but the decision to abandon your neat shelves and well-stocked pantry is difficult. When many people are fleeing after disaster, any prepackaged or commercial food sources will be depleted from the environment within a few hours or days. The food you're carrying may make you a target, just like water would. If you're forced to bug out, there are three keys to your food security. First, make sure that at least some of your food preps are hidden and not discoverable to anyone who may break into your home while you're fleeing the disaster zone. You may end up circling back to your location when the environment is safe again. While people trying to survive might raid your pantry, they aren't likely to go into the attic space, crawl space, or dig up your hidden cache in your backyard. This will give you better odds of coming home to preps you've stored. Second, know how to forage. If you can grab food along your way, if you understand the plants in your area, you will be able to supplement your calories and nutrition density. This can keep you moving. Knowing even a handful of plants you can safely consume could mean a difference between life and death. Know where these food sources are along the route to your bug out location. 90% of people will walk right by sunflowers, curly dock, dandelions, wild onions, chickweed, broadleaf plantain, rose hips, yarrow, even canna lily tubers. Walk your bug out route now and know where various food sources are located in plain sight. Some of your equipment you can take with you. Some you'll have no choice but to leave behind. You may have an arsenal, but you won't be able to carry it all or will walk down the street with it if government resources are deployed. You might not be able to carry a generator if you're on foot. You might not be able to carry much of the equipment you would use in your home location. This is where a bug out bag is crucial. It has to be light enough to maintain mobility and speed but it also needs to have all the essentials you'll need to compensate for what you have to leave behind. Number two, your odds of survival decrease. The minute you step out the door and abandon your location, your odds of survival plummet. Even if you have a bug out bag, hundreds if not thousands of people around you will not be so well prepared. They will all be competing for resources and you are the target with a backpack full of resources. You have to move fast with as much stealth as possible and away from any concentrations of people. That is difficult because people will be clogging whatever pathways away from the disaster zone exist. Desperation can turn even the most civil of people into barbarians. Beyond your personal security, your odds of survival decrease because of the environment. The aftermath of a disaster is often worse than the initial disaster. While a hurricane may pass, the toxic floodwaters left behind can cause severe health problems to you just by wading through them. Poisonous chemicals and sewage may mix with the floodwaters and even render your garden inedible for a time. Debris, destroy and damage buildings, fires, and more can all present immediate dangers. As if the aftermath isn't enough to deal with, simply being in the elements can reduce your odds of survival. Although it varies depending on the skin type, 
you can experience sunburn in a matter of minutes. After 20 minutes without sunscreen, it starts to get dangerous for many people. Without protection, several hours in the sun can give you sun poisoning, dehydration, exhaustion, blistered skin, and heat stroke. You may not use sunscreen every day, but you're also likely moving from your home to vehicle to office to store. Your actual direct exposure isn't consistent. When you're on the road and bugging out, your constant exposure goes way past your average exposure. For this reason, you should make sure that you have sunscreen and a hat in your bug out bag. Long-term exposure to cold, wind, or water is also a hazard to you. Having a jacket, gloves, socks, rain gear, and decent walking or hiking shoes will put the odds of survival back in your favor. And that's assuming you're physically fit to move long distances with your gear. Number three, orderly fashion. Roads can quickly become clogged when you're part of the mass exodus out of a disaster zone. Police or military may want you to move along with the masses in an orderly fashion. They, of course, are trying to control the chaos, but being herded with everyone else may not be in your best interest. Your preps, even what little you carry in your pack, may be seized by the authority in charge. Your weapons for personal protection may be confiscated. You may be separated from your loved ones by age or gender. You could have your travel restricted until orders from above come, which may keep you in an unsafe environment. You could even be herded into a FEMA camp or safe zone when it would be better for you to get out of the area altogether. Sometimes you are safer in the crowd. If you're prepped when others are not, that is usually not the case. Becoming a refugee or part of a group of civilians exiting an area does not necessarily increase your odds of survival. Every person who never bothered to prepare it is also part of this group. Every stranger you would never associate with is thrown together and treated as a whole. You may be swept up into the horde, and forces beyond your control may be making decisions for the desperate group and not necessarily in your best interest. When bugging out, make haste and avoid crowds if at all possible. There is no such thing as an orderly fashion when people are desperate, panicked, and subject to a greater ruling force. Get to your designated primary or secondary bug out location and out of the disaster zone. Number four, lack of skills. Surviving on the road isn't easy and people's lack of skills will get them killed. Some people haven't a clue about filtering water, starting a fire, building a shelter, or tying a knot. Just as they will walk by the food you can forage, they are helpless and desperate after a disaster strikes. You can't save them all, even with the most honed skills and bushcraft expertise. If you start a fire to cook some emergency rations or boil water, you'll soon have every person within a mile radius heading your direction. That being said, fire is the greatest tool you'll have available to you after a disaster. You may need to boil water, cook food, stay warm, even ward away wild animals. You should know how to start a fire without a lighter or matches, and the tools you will need must be in your bug out bag. I know from teaching Cub Scouts that you can have an excellent ferro rod in your bug out bag, but if you have little to no experience starting fires with it, you won't be able to create a fire after a disaster. Practice the skills until they're second nature to you. Having some basic bushcraft skills that aren't just theory but you have put into practice on occasion will mean the difference between surviving or dying. Even with careful rationing on your part, your supplies will eventually run out. As previously mentioned, know how to forage, know how to start a fire, know how to hunt and set a snare, how to process animals, how to find and render water drinkable, and how to build a few different types of simple structures. Practice all these skills as often as you can. Even if you aren't able to put the skills into practice, have a theoretical understanding of it. You might not ever set a bone and make a splint, but you should at least know how. You should know how to treat a wound or stop bleeding. You can take this a step further and get a practice suture kit and learn this vital skill. It would save your life or someone else's. Water, fire, food, medical, and shelter are highly important essentials to surviving a bug out. At the very least, learn what needs to be in your bug out bag. For instance, a tarp that may only cost you a few dollars can mean the difference between surviving by building a structure or dying from exposure. Paracord can serve several functions. But if you don't know how to tie more than a shoelace or a square knot, it will be useless to you. It can take years to become experienced in bushcraft, but even knowing a little may be enough to keep you alive for a short enough period or long enough to figure the rest out. Number five, home field advantage. The moment you step beyond your protective walls, you lose your home field advantage. You become a stranger in a landscape that can be dramatically altered and treacherous. Your personal security is no longer afforded to you by your home shelter. Your resources are reduced to just what you can carry, and you become a competitor for minimal resources. You leave behind tools, equipment, food, water, medical supplies, and more. When you're bugging in and a problem arises, you simply use the tools you have. When you're on the road and a problem arises, 
you are exposed and often lack what you need. You go from efficiently handling issues to struggling to get by. Hydration, nutrients, and sleep are all a ticking clock for you that you must continually wind even as you struggle to keep moving. You don't know where anything is that can help you, and the environment may have dramatically changed in the aftermath of a disaster. Bugging in gives you that home field advantage. Bugging out makes you a stranger in a strange land. Your sense of security from the community might no longer be there either. Whereas neighbors come together beyond their walls after disaster, losing home field advantage means you might be forced to pass through someone else's secure zone. You could be shot at just for walking across someone's land. Where a neighbor might alert you to someone trying to break into your house, you don't have any perimeter warnings when you're out in the wild. Think of how some shady character walking through your neighborhood right now might alert all your neighbors and you. Right now, you might get alerts on social media, phone calls, or a neighbor might confront the individual. You lose all that security when you leave your home field. What you need to know. We'll be going into much greater detail soon on this channel explaining what you need to know to be prepared for three days, three weeks, even three months, or longer after a disaster. Our goal is to get you prepared for a year or more. Being able to survive in a hostile environment for three days is essential. Three weeks or more is optimal, but three months or more will require skills and knowledge you may not currently possess. Getting the knowledge and skills now to survive the worst possible case of having to bug out is key to your survival. While bugging in is always your best option, if a wildfire, storm, or other force will destroy your home, staying put is a death sentence. You have to have some kind of contingency bug out plan. If anyone in your family is disabled or with mobility issues, you have to plug in solutions to still get safely out of your area. If you have pets that you can't imagine leaving behind, you have to have plans and resources to get them to safety. A comprehensive bug out plan is essential to you as your preps at home. Seconds matter to you when you're bugging out. Staying ahead of the masses can get you to safety before exits out of the area are clogged or blocked. Sometimes you have no choice but to bug out, but it should always be your last choice. Now, to be clear, evacuating before a coming disaster is kind of similar to bugging out, but you typically have more time to plan and execute your departure. A desperate bug out often only provides you seconds or minutes, just as you have made practice a family fire drill, practice your bug out plan, have maps of your area, and know your routes to safety. Think of the conditions that would drive you from your home and plan out what you can take. Keep your bags packed water containers, and outdoor clothes ready to go with you at a moment's notice. I encourage people to take their planning a step further and develop a checklist that assigns roles and responsibilities to each member of your family. In that way, every person knows what to do when disaster strikes. If someone is missing from your group, you know what needs to be covered to make a hasty retreat. Bugging out is not easy. Surviving without your home field advantage is even more challenging. Even if you have the best preps and plans at home, don't overlook the bug out option. It may one day be your only option left to survive. What do you think? Have you ever had to evacuate? What do you now wish that you would have known back then? Let us know in the comments below and look at some of my other content on bugging out so you know what to take with you if you have to. I try to read many of the comments and respond to them when I can, and that's typically within the first hour of releasing a video. And please consider subscribing to this channel if you'd like to be notified when I release a video and give this video a thumbs up to help the channel grow. As always, please stay safe out there.